Hey everybody, what's up? Good afternoon. God is good all the time. You know it goes again all the time. God is good. God is the greatest all the time. All the time. God is the greatest. God is the best all the time. All the time. God is the best. Oh God, it has been a while since I've done my usual videos. I'm going to give my words of encouragement and so that we can replace our bad habits with good ones. Not only from for me but for you as well not only for you but for me as well you know because we're all here to serve each other we're all here to help each other each one reaches the other so that we can grow it's like building blocks you know we're not devoid of each other we're not separated from each other we were created to help each other we were created to love each other we were created to serve each other most importantly we were created to love god serve him love him with all our heart or mind or soul or body and the other parts of the first commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves because it is impossible to say that we love god who we do not see physically with our eyes and say we hate our brother who we see with our physical eyes. Remember we were made in the image and the likeness of God. So if you hate your brother, technically you hate God. It sounds kind of harsh and it sounds like you can't fathom it, but that's the reality. So if you hate your brother, really you don't love God. Because love is God. Love is of God. So if there is hatred, it's not of God. Alright? So my words of encouragement to you as per usual, you can do it. You can achieve it. Remember, we're replacing bad habits with good ones. All right. But you have to, what you have to do is kind of perpetuate it, make it an incessant uh, culture of yours now. So every day, what you need to do, it is something that we were not taught because when we, we what we were taught is that if you speak highly of yourself, you're being uh, what self-centered and so on. You, I'm uh, we do have that kind of an attitude where persons can become very self-centered and selfish. However, you create that balance. What you need to do is have positive thoughts about yourself before you can think positive thoughts about others and your surroundings so that you can live a healthy and positive life. So every morning you need to get up as, as much as you're able to and as much as you can remember. Say, hello you beautiful thing. Hello you handsome person. That's what you need to do. You need to speak these things over your life. Think positive right you don't need to say oh i'm too fat i'm too slim i'm too ugly i'm too dark i'm too brown whatever it may be you need to start speaking positive words over your life i was listening to a minister and he said you remember when he was going to high school there was a fellow who was on the football team so you know when you think of the football team you think of somebody who is healthy and fit and you know very valiant looking and each time he would speak with him, he would say, how are you doing? And the guy would say, oh, I'm fat, bald, and old. So he would say he's fat, bald, and old. But he said, even though he may have been joking or, you know, just saying it in passing it, he kept saying it every time he would ask him, how are you doing? That was his response, that he's fat, old, and bald. He said he saw the fellow 15 years later, after they would have left high school. And he was shocked he almost passed out. I'm talking about a real story. Something that happened in real life. Um, when he saw the fellow, the fellow was actually fat, old, and bald. So I'm encouraging you to be careful of the things that you speak over your life. I'm not talking about self-centeredness or there's such a word or selfish. Um, I'm talking about being positive about who you are you were made in the image and the likeness of god you were fashioned in a marvelous way by him you are fashioned and made in a wonderful way by him if you represent a god who is an omniscient omnipotent god the god who owns the entire world the god who is a god of royalty and beauty why would he not want you to live and to have that mindset about yourself that is completely and diametrically different from being self-centered and selfish and focused on self what you're doing you're trying you're making sure that here is whole before you can go out there and make out there whole it's just like your house you clean your house and you make your house beautiful before you go out and you help somebody else you have to start with the inside before you go on, go on the outside so it's a diametrical difference when you're uplifting and you're motivating and you're thinking positive about yourself highly about yourself yet to understand yes the fragility of the body and the fragility of who you are as a human and yes you are not blemish free but at the same time you keep that positive outlook about yourself so that you can live that positive life that is a part of the success road 
So it's impossible for you to say you want to achieve success when you think negative about yourself. You're not at the best you know. Maybe you need to lose a little weight. Maybe you need to, you know, do whatever it is that you want to do to lift yourself, whether it's in your dressing, how you speak. You can do that. You can enhance your beauty because you're already beautiful. You're already handsome. And even if it is that others may have tell you otherwise, I want you to now train your mind. If you even have to write it down and you speak it at least two to three, four, five, six, seven times per day, you do it until it becomes a reality, until it takes root in your subconscious mind. Because what has happened is that sometimes we know the things in our front, front uh, robe of our minds, the front area of our minds, and we know it. But somehow in our subconscious, it's like at the back of our minds, it's saying, nah, you're ugly, nah, something wrong with you. You know, all the negative things that you can think of. I'm encouraging you. In order for you to be able to do it and to achieve greatness, you have to think highly of yourself on a controlled basis. Not in a self-centered manner, but in a manner that says, Hey, I am of a child of the Most High God. I'm a, I'm a queen. I'm a king. I'm a prince. I'm a princess. I'm royalty. I was fashioned in a marvelous way. I was fashioned and made in a wonderful way by the Almighty God. All right, so that is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about balancing it with how God thinks about you. If you were to really sit down and fathom, just shut your eyes and go in a kind of a, a nostalgic moment of the happiest moment of your of your of your life, and you just start to reflect, match it up with God's thoughts about you. Maybe your mind couldn't understand it probably you wouldn't be able to fathom it because you couldn't understand how deep and wide and how rooted his love is for you. When he thinks of you, he sees beauty. He doesn't see what maybe others may call you in a negative sense. He sees beauty. He sees a king. He sees a queen. He sees a prince. He sees a princess. I don't care if you're fat, if you're slim, in between, wherever you may be. God can help you to adjust what needs to be adjusted in due time. But what you need to do is make sure that the inside, the inner man is whole and on a positive path, thinking highly and positive of yourself so that you're able to achieve the success that you're looking forward to. We were created to be successful. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord God Almighty, plans not to harm you, but to prosper you and to give you a bright future, a future and a good hope. That is the kind of God I serve. So I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you that in spite of, I don't know what your situation may be. You may say, if I only knew. Well, sometimes we say, I, there's a case I've often been told of this story. A man wanted to kill himself, went up into the tree um, to kill himself. He went straight up in the tree because life was so, it's like he went through a a despairing life almost you know where maybe in a natural sense you would say well i can understand him killing himself maybe you just don't know what it is that he may have gone through maybe he went through what job went through you know a similar situation losing all his wealth losing his home losing his family's children almost his lifeline and losing his health three fundamental things that could drive anybody stark mad crazy and his wife on top of it saying, curse God and die. He had to say, oh foolish woman, the Lord gives and the Lord takes. That was a man of faith. And losing all of that, he still trusted God. He kept his faith. I'm not saying that he didn't become despondent. I'm not saying there are times that maybe suicide didn't come across his mind because we're human beings. However, he had to go back into his subconscious, into his heart and say, no. The Lord knows the Lord knows what is happening. And even though I'm going through all of this challenge and even though I'm going through all these challenges and these trials and these tribulations and all of these things that I'm going through, as difficult and as painful as they may be, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what lesson God may want to teach me in it, but he's going to teach me a lesson. Remember, we talk about the fruit of the spirit, whether it's long suffering, because sometimes we forget that we have to learn that. We have to learn patience. We have to learn love. We have to learn forgiveness. We have to learn forgiveness. The story, true story is told of a man who, who his son 
was eaten by a cannibal, a man ate his son. And years later, fast forward, and he turned around and he forgave the man to the point where he was able to hug the man. That was a difficult one, but he, ch he chose the, the correct way. Let's say it that way. So his heart was whole again. He was healed because he made that concerted effort and he made that choice. No one forced him. He made the choice that, look here, I have two choices. I can either be bitter or I can be better. He ate my son, but I'm going to be better. In spite of the fact that he ate my son, he took almost my lifeline from me. But I'm going to be better. I'm not going to be bitter. Somebody betrayed you. He almost destroyed you. But I am going to be better. You lost your health, but you're going to be better. You lost your wealth, but you're going to be better. You lost your job. But you're going to be better. In spite of whatever it is that you have gone through, you are going to be better, not bitter. You're going to forgive. You're going to love in spite of. It is not an easy road. It's a task that we just have to climb. It's like we're climbing a hill with a sack on our back. You know, heavy with rocks in it. That is, how de that is how it is. But guess what? We are determined that we are climbing that hill. We are climbing it. We are climbing. We are persistent. Persistence and faith basically are similar. It's synonymous. It's related to each other. If, you're, if you have faith, you're going to persist. And if you persist, it means you have faith. You trust the Almighty God that in spite of the betrayal, despite the hurt, the losses that I face, the pain that you cannot actually cut, I will be better. I will not be bitter. That should be your mantra. That should be your mantra. That should be your motto. That in spite of whatever it may be, I am going to be better. It is difficult. I had to learn that lesson. That in spite of it, my mantra is I am going to be better. I'm on the road to success. I am successful, but I'm even climbing for the higher heights in success. And when I talk about success, I'm not talking about only financial wealth. I'm talking about health. For its long haul. I'm talking about a peace of mind that passeth all understanding. There's nothing like peace in your soul. I'm talking about a healthy family life. I'm talking about healthy friendships. I'm talking about being able to keep a positive mindset in spite of the challenges and the difficulties and the trials and the pains and the hurt and the betrayals. I will be better. I will be better. I will be better. I will not be bitter. I will be better because I can do it. I can achieve it. Whatever my mind can conceive, I certainly can achieve. Napoleon Hill said, when it is that you find yourself thinking about the greatest thing that you're able to achieve, then you'll be able to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. So I'm going to encourage you today that in spite of your difficulties, in spite of your challenges, in spite of whatever it is that you may be going through, you will be better. You will not be bitter. In spite of all of that, you will not be bitter. You will be better. Forgive those who may have hurt you. Forgive those who may have wronged you as difficult as it may be. The man was able to forgive the man who ate his son. So even if it is that somebody had betrayed you, even if it is that somebody hurt you, did all the worst thing in life that they could have done to you, you have to forgive. If you don't, you will not be forgiven. Remember, we are flawed beings. Remember, each of us, we have done some wrong. That is why Jesus said to the men when they, had, when they threw the lady at him, the lady who was commit, uh, caught in the act of adultery, and, his, and he said to them, ye without sin cast the first stone.
So I'm encouraging you in order for you to achieve your success, in order for you to achieve your goals, in order for you to achieve your desires, you have to be better, not bitter. So you need to take the vowel I from the vocabulary and you replace it with E because you're on the road to success. You're going to be bit better. You're not going to be bitter. You're going to be better. So we're replacing bitter with better in no matter how difficult it is. In spite of how hard it may be, we're replacing bitter with better. I'm encouraging you today, my friends, because we, we are on the road to success. We're on the road to success mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, educationally. We're on the road to success. That's the road we are charting. So our mantra is we are going to be better. 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 You pencil it down. All your goals, all your dreams, all your desires, you pencil it down. And every day you look at them, you speak them aloud. When you wake up in the morning, before you go to bed. During the course of the day. Because your mantra is that you're going to be better. That's my mantra. I hope it's the same for you. We are going to be better. We are not going to be bitter. We are going to be better. And that is our road for success. So forgive those who may have hurt you. Forgive yourself if you know you have wronged somebody. Make it right with whoever it is that you may have wronged. Forgive them. Love them. Don't, don't, don't watch your feelings. Feelings come and go. They come and go like the wind. Today you feel good or for, the, for this hour you feel good. The next hour you don't feel good. You can't watch your feelings. You have to know. You have to have that faith within that assurance. That look here. I'm on this road to success. So I know I need to fulfill certain mantras. I need to be better. I need to forgive. I need to love. I need to give. I need to be compassionate. I need to show mercy. I need to invest in myself, invest in others. I need to lift up others. Those are the things that take you on the road to success. A man had asked a millionaire, a multimillionaire, a billionaire, I can't remember, what it is that makes you so successful. He was speaking about money in this sense. He says, I'm going to tell you the secret to success. It's give and to serve others. And this was not a necessarily a religious man per se possibly he was possibly he wasn't but he says the road to success and wealth that you so desire and health that you so desire is to give and to serve others that should be your mantra so i'm encouraging you you can do it you can achieve it you can achieve it you just have to replace bitter with better remove the i and you put the E. Remember our vowels A, E, I, O, U. In this case, we're going to remove the I and we're going to put in the E. And we are going to be better. So my beautiful people, my handsome men, my beautiful women, lovely children, whoever you may be, I'm encouraging you to make it your daily mantra, your life mantra, that you're going to be better, not bitter. You're going to forgive, you're going to love. Because you can do it. You can achieve your goals. You can achieve your desires. Alright. You just have to do your part. Have a beautiful day. Have a great afternoon. Good.